Good evening, everyone. I call this zoning board meeting to order. Um, can we have a roll call, please, Amy? Yes. Here. 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 Okay, can we have the salute to the flags, please? Now would be a good time to say, please turn off your ringers. And I will too. Uh, the notice requirements of the ocean pub the open public meeting law for this meeting have been satisfied. A copy of the notice has been sent to the Asbury Park Press and the coaster and filed in the office of the township clerk on July 22nd, 2022. Uh, everyone should know there is an emergency exit through the courtroom doors and to the exit to the rear of the room. No smoking is permitted, of course. No new cases will be started tonight after 10 p.m. No new testimony taken after 10.30 p.m. In addition, the applicant will be limited to 45 minutes of testimony. All meetings will be video and audio taped and shown on the township's community cable channel, Channel 22 on Fios and Channel 77 on Cablevision. Uh, we start with the resolution moralization, right? We have Kane Brewery, Stephen Shammy, and Vincent Vianney, are those all together? Can we do this at the same time? Mark? Yes. We can? Okay. All the same time. Oh, is there another one? Oh, it's the one to defend this, the lawsuit? No, the next, the, the other one we have Evan and Mora Getz. Can I offer? Can someone offer? I'll offer. Will someone second? I'll second. Amy, can you call the roll? Yes. 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 I also vote yes. <laughs> okay, no. I abstained on right. on one of them. Right. That's why she, yeah, yeah, you're going off that list. Okay. Um, cases carried to December 15th, 2022 to be held in person in the public meeting room, municipal building, Deal and Mammoth Roads, Oakhurst. Ashkenazi, block 11.01, lot 3, 1036 Norwood Avenue. Sean Realty, LLC, block 141, lot 3. And uh, New Jersey State Highway, Route 66, Asbury Avenue. Sorora Land Development, Block 22, Lots 85 and 85.01, 280 Norwood Avenue. Robert Davidson and Stephanie Russell, Block 22, Lot 61, 332 Overbrook Avenue. Memo Investments, Block 7, Lot 51, 44 Monmouth Road. Patricia Cody, Block 106, Lot 3, 1305 Spruce Avenue. And Alex Widener, Block 212, Lot 22. 1201 Marion Avenue. Again, those are carried to December 15th. Case carried to December 8th via Zoom will be the Seaview Corp Corporate Park, Block 149.01, Lot 1.01. The uh, web information is available on this agenda. It's posted over on the wall, I believe. Is that correct, Amy? And that website is also available online, correct? Okay. Action needed. Resolution to defend the suit on behalf of the Zoning Board of Adjustment of the Township of Ocean in the matter of Joseph, Joseph Seller and Anna Seller versus Ocean Township Zoning Board of Adjustment and Larchwood Synagogue Incorporated. Mark, do you have anything to say on that? Basically, this is the second lawsuit we received from a, a neighbor uh, on the Larchwood Synagogue, um, alleging that the board acted arbitrary and reasonable capricious. Um, it's the appeal process, basically, from the board to the court. Um, it'll eventually be joined uh, with the pending action from Ms. Hadea, so that it'll all be tried and done at one time. But okay. that authorizes me to file an answer and be present for 
the combination. Okay, so here we vote to defend ourselves vigorously with, through you, right? <laughs> will someone please offer? I will offer. A second. Amy, call the roll. Yes. 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 Okay. We'll begin with our continued case, Elon High School Incorporated, Block 207, Lot 1 and 8, 1200 Roselle Avenue. Ms. Krimko. Good evening, Hello. Mr. Chair, members of the board. I understand some people are recusing themselves. Yes. Did Ms. Tellerico, did you? I did. I watched it. Perfect. And, I and you the signed it. Perfect. The so Mr. Manella stepped down and Mr. Mamey has stepped down. They had previously stepped down. We got the application. And as you know, we, we can count you have five eligible board members for a vote. So it would be your option when you conclude the case whether or not you want to proceed to a vote or not or even proceed tonight. Right. Well, I, I would like to just to start Jennifer Krimko uh, on behalf of the applicant. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Uh, members of the board, I would like to proceed tonight and see how far we can get into it. Um, depending on how good of poker players the board members are, I guess we can make the decision at the end whether or not to vote or if the board will entertain my request for a straw poll vote. But all of that being said, I'd like to get started and see if we cannot get all the uh, testimony in. As the board may remember, Rabbi uh, Joey Dayan testified at the last meeting. He's the operator of the camp. He's also the spiritual advisor for the Elan High School. And he offered the basic testimony with regard to operations and with regard to what was previously granted, i.e. 160 uh, high school students for a uh, summer school. And what we're proposing here is the same number of students, uh, but much younger and uh, less less intensive, I would, I would argue. Uh, we did not move anything into evidence at the last meeting. So if I can take a moment and just move everything in so we have it for reference. And then I'll tell you who is here tonight to testify and we can go from there. So A1 will be the use variance site plan by Nelson Engineering Associates dated 5-11-22. Excuse me, with no revision consisting of two sheets. A2 are the architectural plans showing the proposed usage of the existing school by Graviano and Gillis Architects and Planners. And that is dated 4-19-22 with no revision. And A3 is the traffic impact study prepared by Dynamic Traffic, dated May 18th, 2022. And as you can imagine, based on the plans I just moved in, we have David Besh here who can testify to what we're proposing by way of very limited site improvements. Uh, we have the architect, uh, Mr. Gillis here, really to answer any questions. I think this the plans were done very uh, clearly and succinctly, color-coded, so it's very obvious what we're doing there. And as you see on the plans, we're not making any changes to the building at all. Uh, and then I have uh, the traffic engineer here to answer any questions with regard to traffic, both compared to what was approved by way of the school, <coughs> as well as, I'm sorry? No. Oh, as well as what was proposed here. And then finally, I have Andy Jan, your professional planner, to talk about the um, proofs that are needed for a use variance. I will say, and it's not reflected on the plans because we have not had an opportunity to uh, get any direction, but my clients did meet with at least one of the neighbors and a representative from the other neighbor, and we can stipulate now, should a solution be including supplementing the trees on that portion uh, facing those homes, or even putting up a solid fence, the applicant is amenable to any reasonable condition to mitigate you know, any perceived impact. And importantly, that mitigation would obviously benefit him even with the school operation aside from this use variance. So it's not on the plans, but I will tell you at the outset, we are very much open to any kind of buffering that the board or the neighbor deem necessary. So with all of that, I'd like to introduce <coughs> <clears throat> hmm. Okay, I 
Do we have paper plans that we can see? You do. Can I have one minute to call Dave Bash and just make sure nothing's wrong? Sure. That's very unusual, mm. having done this 20 plus years. He's never not been here. It's a waiver site plan. It's, oh, it's, it's used, but to the extent site plan is for, for evidence. Okay. David is not going to be with us this evening. Okay. But Who will be your first witness? Hmm? Yeah, so my first <coughs> witness is going to be Rabbi uh, Joey Dayan. He was sworn at the last meeting. Yes, he remains yep, under oath. Absolutely. Unlike how I, pre how I typically do it, as you know, we go through plans, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions here uh, because the rabbi is not familiar with uh, how you present something like sure. this. So, Rabbi, we're looking at what we moved in as A1, and it shows the existing high school building and the existing parking lot, correct? Yes. Okay. And in it, there is a shaded area that is labeled proposed summer camp recreation area. Right. Okay. Is that the area where you intend to have the children play? Yes. Um, like we mentioned. Yeah. Based on the small groups throughout the day? Yes. And there's something indicating temporary barrier, and then in the upper left, there's a detail of the temporary barrier, and the purpose of that is to uh, keep cars from going in that area and protect the safety of the kids while they're there, and it's on both sides. Exactly. Okay. And part of the area that is proposed for the um, recreation area is where the bus parking was for the high school. Right. Okay. And... Because you're not going to have that bus parking, is it your testimony that there will be no buses parked here? Any buses that come will leave, and there'll be no buses parked here? Um, there will be no buses parked here, that's correct. There might be buses that are waiting, you know, a few minutes. No, 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 that's, I'm not, I'm, park the, per the, per the, right. no. the no. purpose for this is, yes. because they're going to park, and part of the reason is, is that some of the high school students came from Brooklyn, right. or outside of this area, so when the buses came, they correct. stayed. Um, are you proposing any other site changes other than what was indicated? No. Okay. And um, I had offered that the neighbors live, and I'd ask the board to look at where Roselle and Herbert meet. The neighbors lived across there. Uh, you, did, did you have the opportunity to meet with the neighbors? I went to both neighbors' homes, but both of them weren't home. I spoke to one of the gentlemen's son and another person that was by the other gentleman's house. And I mentioned to them that we'd be willing to put, you know, beef up the trees along the uh, area here that is near their houses, or put a fence, like you mentioned, okay. to help with noise or, you know, and whatever. Okay, so if the board were to approve this and it was subject to us preparing a plan showing fencing and or landscaping subject to the board planner, you'd be completely comfortable with that? Yes. Okay. And I will offer to the board that because of fence in that location, would technically require a variance because it would be solid and above four feet. And any line of evergreens that grew together would essentially be a hedge, would be a variance. We would ask that should the board vote favorably to also in an abundance of caution grant a variance for fence hedge height in a front yard 
for six feet so we can put in the buffer that we're offering. Okay. So. Where's the area there? Ben and Jim, have you looked at that already? That's the number we're not here. We so we're talking about the, the fence, a fence going along Herbert Avenue. Correct. Uh, and it, because, uh, again, mm -hmm. the neighbors who are objecting or, or here expressing their concerns are here. And as driving by, it is relatively sparse right here. Okay. And for the record, the first here was across Herbert Avenue from the site. Right. And the second here was along the frontage of the site where the parking is. Right. Okay. Right. And so, uh, again, the applicant... The applicant would submit that we would be subject to any landscaping uh, up to the town's planner. Okay. So there are no other no. improvements on the site. Okay. I mean, well, there, there should be some additional landscaping along the other property line in the back of the house is the front on Lawrence Avenue. Okay. Because there was supposed to be some there and it's not there. Okay, so again... We're not limiting it just to that area. To the extent that additional landscaping is required, is that going to cause any security problems? <coughs> landscaping? No, a solid fence. Why we could do one or the other. It doesn't have to be a fence. Why would a solid fence cause any problems? There's already a fence along there. I, the security issues. I no no no. I understood. So I don't know if you. Well, again, we're not committing to one or the other. We're saying subject to... What? You, you close everybody in, and you won't be able to see out. We're not closing everybody in. It's just along that property line. There'll still be a direct view from Logan Road. And, and, and from Roselle yeah. in this way. So, so, we're yeah. not proposing to fence in the entirety of the property just to minimize the impact to the neighbors immediately adjacent. <coughs> well... well what would you want as a planner? What? What would you want as a planner? As as a planner, I really don't see a need for anything there, but considering the fact that there are neighbors that are objecting and have concerns, I would say a, a five foot high fence and landscaping. What type and, of fence? And, what? It would be a board on board. Board, board on board, 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 wood. Yeah. Board on board. I would say wooden. It would be much more, you don't want a white, white fence there that's just going to, Board on board wooden fence yeah. and landscaping on the outside of it. Mm -hmm. What is there yes. room? Yes. Okay. I'm I think that. yes. Yeah, there's yeah. room. And I, I actually think there is a plan that requires landscaping there. We have to look at the prior approval. And there is landscaping there. Yeah. It's okay. just it, it hasn't grown together yeah. okay. to make it a robust buffer. So we're what okay. I'm suggesting we'll is we would meet Jim out on site and supplement as directed. Yeah. And if he felt that a fence was required, then we'd put the fence in as well. That's what we're offering. And the way the road bends there, no sight line issues, right? Bends the opposite direction, no, so there, it's fine. There's no concern with, yeah. with sight uh, visibility or sight triangles or anything like yeah. that. Question on the barriers. They, uh, is the intent to keep them there permanently, like all summer, or are you taking them down every day and putting them back up? So, um, in the morning when the buses come to drop the kids off, we want to have the flow, so we're not going to have them up. Then after they leave at like 10 in the morning when they're going to come out to play, we would put them up to make sure that it's safe for the kids to play, and then we'll take them down at 3 o'clock at the end of the day. We're not going to leave them up permanent. Okay. Yeah. And there's enough parking. I mean, once when the barriers are up and the kids are playing, there's enough parking in the lot yeah. to accommodate. A 100%. Minute. Is there still going to be a discussion with the neighbors that had concerns, or is this going to alleviate that? Well, they're wrong. Well, so, they're so again, to, yeah. the discussion we had in advance, and I, I thought he spoke to the actual owners, I understand it was their representative. What I'm offering here is for them to hear, so when they come up with comment, but obviously at the public portion, they'll have an opportunity to offer whatever opinions they want. I'm just stipulating at the outset mm -hmm. we're willing to do this to ameliorate those concerns. That's all. Thank you. Are there any other questions with regard qu to the site? I have a quick question. So you said the uh, barricades are going to be put up in the morning and then taken down at the end of the day? Yeah. And then where are they going to be stored? Are they That's on site? Question. That's a good question. <coughs> What do you think? Likely in the building? Yeah, probably. Okay, inside yeah. the building. Yes. Not, but I would say, yeah. You're not going to be putting up a new shed or anything like that? No. Just no, 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 no. 
Don't we worry, if Jennifer would make sure we would have we, that on we, there. We know better. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Does the public have any questions? Come on up, sir. If you go right over that microphone over there, hopefully it's working. Battery went dead last month, I think, right? Yes, exactly correct. Please just state your name and your address. My name is John Waldron, uh, 1207 Herbert Avenue. Welcome. Thank you. All right, the, uh, that's very kind, or, uh, you know, a very nice gesture on the part of Ilan, but the issue still sir, remains. I'm, I have to interrupt, I'm sorry. This portion, you're asking questions. I know, I have a him. question. Okay. The, but the issue still remains on on um, um, noise and and what I of the children and uh, the rabbi had said on the, at the last meeting that um, their little children I couldn't I tried to compare to the high school noise which is sometimes horrendous um, uh, and he said well these are little children and they have little voices so my question to begin with is, uh, uh, if the rabbi could further explain that, because in my experience, children of that age group are completely unconcerned with volume and have a, a tendency to screech, and, and, and it's shown even on Saturday mornings now at the, at the, at, during temple services, the children are outside, and they're just disruptive to the neighborhood. This is the problem. It's, you know, the buffer is great, that's needed, but the noise is the big problem. Sir, you gotta let him answer the question. Oh, I'm sorry, I did ask the question. Okay, I, I don't, I'm not arguing that there won't be any noise. We were just saying at the last meeting that the little kids are supervised and they don't go out on their own, so, you know, it'll be at least the same or better than the high school students there in the summer, you know? Well, just to go one step further, with the high school students, they're all let out en masse. There's no, and that could be up to the 160, but let's just say it's 100 students, right. correct? Yes. What we're proposing is, and I think he gave the testament the last time, 20 okay. approximately? Yes, approximately. So instead of 100 plus, we're talking about 20 students. Mm -hmm. And when the high school kids, or even when the synagogue occurs, is there a teacher or a camp counselor there monitoring them and telling? No, no, no. I mean today, the high oh, school kids. No, no, not today. Right. So in the proposed condition, they will never be out there unsupervised. So to the extent that they are inclined to shriek or to make noise, there will be an adult there who can control in a much better setting. Yes. So in your opinion, if the high school were to have summer school, which they're permitted to do without any of the buffers and without any further regulation, they could conceivably have 100 plus kids in the summertime, out in the parking lot for break time or recess time. That's correct. And, and, and cause more noise than right. what we're proposing. So in your opinion, based on the limited <coughs> number of students and the fact that they're going to be completely supervised the entire time, is it your opinion that what we're proposing is actually less intense from a noise perspective? Yes, yes that's my opinion. Can I ask the question that be, have you considered that it is summertime and we windows are open, people are outside uh, enjoying their homes, enjoying their property? How, how does this, um, don't you think that that more intensely affects the homeowner? Well, like Jennifer said, you know, I think it's approved for a summer school where there could be up to 160 high school students. So I think what we're proposing is less noisy than and, high and school students. Rabbi, just to go one step further, when does school let out? June. Okay, so typically in May and in early June, windows are open when the high school's <coughs> operating. Also. So it's not just because well, it's it, summer. Oh, all right, I can't make comments, I understand. Uh, but Basically, what you're saying then is, you're just saying that this is the lesser of two evils. Right. That there's a school there, and we have summer school, and now instead of the summer school, we're proposing a summer camp, yeah. Do you consider the possibility that 
you have neighbors that, you know, the noise may be disrupted to their lives? Yeah, well, that's why we said we're proposing to do whatever we can to buffer the noise as best as we can. How we does a tree or, or a fence buffer the noise? Well, it might I, help to some degree. You know, I, the noise won't travel You're as not much. a sound expert, so I'm going to advise <laughs> yeah. you not to answer okay. that. All right. All right, well, those are some of my questions. I, I thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir, come on up. David Miller, 1203 Herbert Avenue. I just have one question. This is the approval that the board gave back in 2011, I believe it was, for the school, the Elyon School. <coughs> have you followed everything in this approval? Can we try the best we can? Yeah, well, I He's not the, he doesn't run the day-to-day -day operations. I'd indicated and he testified he's the spiritual advisor for the school. Well, somebody should have an answer to that. Okay. Well, and again. Because that is the biggest issue as far as I'm concerned. Okay, but that's. That's, that's an enforcement issue. Well, that's well, an enforcement question. issue, and that's mm -hmm. a, a question for later on in the hearing. And it, it's a point that you can certainly make to the board, but not for this witness. Okay. And I just have this to say, he did come to my house, a lady friend of mine was there, and she said you should come back. They never came back. Okay. Okay. Say that, but okay. Yeah, sure. What is the ratio of staff to students? So is it like one staff for <coughs> 20 students? <coughs> what is the ratio? So, that's a good question. We said that we might have age range of students from mm -hmm. two to ten. So depending on the age range, this the ratio will change. In other words, so give the the range yeah, so of when it's three and four year olds, the range is like one to five, I would say. Okay. And when it's uh, you know six to ten year olds, I would say it's probably like one to seven or one to eight. So if there's twenty students outside, you would have three staff basically right. if it's 78 year olds or <coughs> even more staff if right. it was younger um so my other question is how old are the camp counselors that's a good question so they range you know um they range from i would say 16 to you know 65 you know but we usually have in one group like we'll you know team up a very experienced you know teacher with you know an assistant teacher that's a little younger so we'll have you know different ages for each group you know, I mean we always have a few very you always have you, you always have an let's just say an older or a more experienced person in right. each group you, you don't have two teenagers right. running a group correct and are these parents or how what's the qualifications of a camp counselor I, I just don't know right. so usually it's that they've you know had some training you know CIT training and they go through a process before they could become an actual counselor they become a junior counselor and then you know, so it's really having experience working at other camps or even at our camp, um, and that's usually the experience. And then the older ones usually have teaching experience as well, you know, in the school. Thank you. Good question. What's, cur what's currently going on there during the summers now? So this summer school now. Yeah. How many students in the summer are there in question. the summer school? I don't know the answer. Roughly? I mean, they... Uh, probably uh, anywhere from you know 30 to 80 you know depending on how many kids I think each year it's different because how many kids need to be in summer school you know depends on each year so it kind of changes and, that, and then also in the school the synagogue has services right that's true and that's would that would continue yeah. right and then that the, the summer school would go away and this would yes take its place exactly yes. what hours of the day would the children be outside for a break recess so we said, I think, at the last hearing, probably, not uh, probably, I think 10 to 3, I think, at the time. Because what happens is when they come in at 9, first they pray and do other things, I would say the time frame is 10 to 3. You know, 3.15 if I want to be super safe, you know. Okay, and you're the, you're the director of the camp, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. It's your responsibility and you're offering this testimony. So whatever compliance issues the school, whatever the compliance issues the school may have, you'd be the one personally responsible for enforcing any um any conditions that this board imposed yes okay 
So I think that that's an important distinction that um, the camp operator is responsible for enforcing any conditions you impose here where he doesn't have that same level of day-to-day -day control over the school should there be any alleged violations. And again, sh should there be any, I would suggest if there's a resolution that says something, then the zoning officer should be alerted and it's an enforcement issue. I know um, in the past, I have gotten calls about violations and they were immediately rectified. I have not had a call about a violation here in more than a decade. Not possible, in five or six years. <laughs> My math is off, sorry. Any other questions from the board? I do. Go ahead, sorry. yeah, have that. Sure. So there will not be any infants or anything like that, okay. And then my other question is, will there be any students that need medication? Will there be nurses there? I mean, has that been looked at? That's a good question. So um, usually there's a nurse or somebody, they call it a professional for in first aid and CPR. There's a requirement from the state that you have a certain level of, we call it the camp nurse, but not necessarily as she, you know, the person in RN, you know. Okay. But there is somebody who's qualified in certain, you know, specific uh, first aid type of, uh, things and to administer medication is that no, so administer medication we don't do there's a whole system how a parent when they you know sign up their child they question off if they could even do like over-the-counter things but generally speaking we don't administer really medication okay and miss teller just a point of clarification and i don't know that we put this in i know you guys have done a lot of camps here but i don't know that we put it in the camp is regulated by what's called the youth camp safety act exactly. that's a state regulatory um mm -hmm state regulations which do exactly what you say they protect it's all about safety and protection yes. and they do it, inspections and right and, and you have to be licensed and it has to they come to the site and all of these things are included in it okay. so, so the state yeah. does monitor this and they have to get a license every year that's correct understood thank you sure. any other questions from the public okay you have another come on up sure Yeah, yes, you know, please. We make a record. So if they type it out, they would know who's speaking. John Walden, 107 Riverdale. <coughs> I, I have a question. It's still very just. I have to object. That's not a question to his testimony. Yes. That's I think that's borderline a, aggressive. Well, I'm not. I don't think. I don't think it's borderline aggressive. I understand your point, yes. and I think that's something that the rabbi can think about. But I think it's when your turn comes to advise the board of these things, that type of testimony to the board would be more appropriate. I appreciate you trying to, to have a question, but it's, it's, <laughs> and we're not shutting you down. Yeah, you have a time. Right, it's, and, and again, I, when I say borderline aggressive, I mean it's not. It puts him in an untenable. Yeah. He can't answer that question. It's a rhetorical question, right? Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Um, does the board want to hear from the architect as to the layout, or are the plans abundantly clear as to how the building's going to be used? Do you gentlemen have any questions over there? No. No. Yeah, I think we're okay with that. Okay, uh, Justin. I'm going to have our traffic expert just give a quick uh, summary of his report as it relates to the traffic impact as well as the adequacy of parking. Hello. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. You've appeared so you before know, this board a lot many of other times. Boards, the attorney swears you yeah, And the planning board here. <laughs> they here yeah. Mr. Steinberg doesn't like to work, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, Justin, uh, you submit a report. Could you take a moment? I know you've testified here numerous times. You're submitting as a licensed professional engineer with a specialty in traffic engineering? Yes, that's correct. And my license is still in good standing. Unless there's any questions. We no, yes, we know so, you well. Thank you. Justin, when we 
when we reached out to you about putting the camp here, you did a study based on existing conditions, um, the operation of the school, the information that was given as to the operations of the proposed camp, and what are your findings with regard to traffic impact and availability of parking, particularly since a portion of the lot will be used for outdoor play? Sure. Um, when I started, that was one of my biggest concerns, was to make sure that as we were eliminating 40 parking spaces, that we would have sufficient parking for the operation of the camp um, at, at the time. The other thing we wanted to look at was to drop off circulation patterns to ensure that the vehicles that were bringing these kids and young children, as you've heard, to and from the site would operate safely and efficiently because it is a high school now and the kids are being dropped off by, by larger buses. So in order to quantify that, we worked with the applicant to come up with the, their anticipated delivery system for these, for these children, as well as the staffing that they would anticipate. Um, you've heard testimony that's gonna be either two different types of age groups. It would be between two and five year olds or six to eight year olds, but it's not gonna be an overlap six of them. Ten. Six to 10, excuse me. For the little kids, what they do is they use the 25 passenger vans uh, or the small buses to allow a smaller um, number of kids on the bus. They also have staffing. Typically, approximately three of the counselors would be on the bus with the children at the same time. We've conservatively estimated 16 kids for every one of those van buses. So what we'd be talking about is 10 vans dropping off in the morning and 10 vans... Um, picking up in the afternoon to, to bring the kids home. We've also conservatively estimated that only half of the staff would be driven in the buses, and the other half would drive their own vehicles here, just to give a conservative picture of the traffic uh, to be generated by the site. And then we went out and we counted the traffic along Logan Road to figure out what was going on at the time that we started the study. And knowing the area, we also utilized uh, seasonal adjustment factors to bump the volume up a little bit, because we all know it's a little bit busier on Logan Road in the summertime. And so we wanted to make sure that we were really getting an accurate picture of what was going on there um, when the camp would be in session. And what we find is the driveway is going to operate at good levels of service. We're at level of service D or better during either one of the peak hours when the school would be starting or when the school would be leaving um, yeah. start camp. Um, so based on that, I think there's the capacity on Logan Road, even the summertime, to handle the 10 or so vans that we're talking about, um, the, the staffing coming in and out. Now, if it's going to be the older children, it's actually going to be the larger buses, and that traffic impact is actually going to be reduced slightly. We anticipate a maximum of about four larger buses if it's that age group, but we analyze the, the more conservative part of it with the, uh, the, smaller, the smaller children and the um, increase in the number of vans. Justin, one of the questions that we had when we were preparing for this was, um, what happens if parents drop the kids off? and you had an opportunity to speak to the client who operates the camp at a much larger level than uh, what we're proposing here. And what did you find by way of uh, drop off? What percentage would you say? So based on the other camp that he's operating, it's 5% or so. And that's typically the kids that have a dentist appointment in the morning or are running a little bit slow and miss the bus and the parents you know, have to drive them in, but they don't really they anticipate picking up all the children all the time other than these uh, random occurrences. But in the analysis, what we used was five kids, uh, five parents being uh, dropping off their children each day. Okay, and when the parents drop off, because the drop off is a result of the kid either oversleeping or having a doctor's appointment, it's not at the same time the buses are there. That's correct. It typically be after the buses had already uh, dropped the children off and left the site. Um, and the other piece we did talk about is the parking. There's 121 parking spaces on the site currently. We're removing 40 of them to park the, uh, to create the play area for the children, which leaves us 81 parking spaces. Now you've heard the ratio that the rabbi gave you, uh, one to five, one to six, right? That turns out to be about 36 staffing members. We anticipated about 50, 45 teachers and, and five custodial staff that would be on there. So even if we're at that 50 number, we have 81 parking spaces available at the time. So I have no concern with um, barricading off and removing the, the 40 spaces during the summer for the, for the camp facilities. I have a question. What's the percentage of Ocean Township residents of the children and staff? We don't know. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't have that, that information. Okay. 
would I be able to get that or no? I, it, at the risk of um, <laughs> at the at the at the risk of sounding, f I don't want to come across flippant or I don't want to come across that I don't want to help you with that question. It's more of a curiosity than relevant to the application. From a legal perspective, if parents live close by, they could walk. Understood. Uh, we don't anticipate walkers for the camp. When we did this, we did it based on everybody being on a bus, not not walking. So the buses are coming from out of town? No, it's not what I said. The town is very large. There's lots of areas in Ocean Township that you couldn't walk to from here. Okay. And how do we not know what they're doing? I, I, I guess my question is, how do we not know if they're Ocean Township residents? We do know what the, what the applicant's position is. It's not relevant to what your consideration is for the use variance, whether they're Ocean Township residents or West Long Branch <clears throat> residents or Allenhurst residents. The use is the same, and the testimony is with regard to the busing and with regard to the drop-off. Is the current uh, student base during the summer, are they bust now? Yes. Yeah. They are. Okay. Yeah. So it's similar to the application. Yep. Yes. So the, um, the removal of the um, 40 or so spaces to house the, the uh, summer camp area, that leaves sufficient parking for the rest of the site for whatever the remainder of the you know the day for for the use that it's gonna be at yes yes it's my opinion based on the staffing levels that they anticipate for the summertime camp use that is more than sufficient um i know jim had this in his report but i i <coughs> have the same question uh that there was testimony that the children attending the summer camp are between two and ten years old. Are there two-year-olds that are going to be riding the bus? Yeah, I think that was that okay. rabbit day, and I stand to that. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Um, do me a favor. Okay. Use this microphone. I'm not picking up on the other one. It's going to be here, though, isn't it? I can hear you. You know, we put in there two, but it's really three, but in case the kid's two years and 11 months, you know what I mean? So really, you're right. Two-year-olds really typically don't ride a bus. But just to be safe, because I don't want to be, you know. He doesn't want to be in violation and have right. someone who's going to be three right. that summer right. on the bus right. and then say that they're not That's following the approval. <coughs> okay. Could we, could we go over the, uh, I got confused a little bit when we were talking about the, the two different groups. Um, is it an either or? Yes. I, could, I just I, I know you talked about it last time and I so I, yeah, no I apologize yeah, I just need to refresh we're saying it's an either or yeah exactly it's either going to be a two to five range and they typically ride the smaller buses yep, okay. and that type of thing or it'll be like the six to ten range and they'll drive and, the big you know ride right, the big right. and, and just the reason we have both no not at the same time <clears throat> we won't so again so the camp will have to be a three to yes six right. or six to so ten so you're <laughs> not going to have two different age groups right. Correct. So the, and the reason for that, so the board understands, this is a satellite from the much larger camp, so it's going to be de dependent on what the enrollment is at the other camp where it needs to be. So it's not, you're not going to have some days there'll be 10-year-olds. It's going to be for the entirety of the Season, summer. Right. So what the rabbi is looking for is just some flexibility based on enrollment to have either a summer of three to five or a summer of six to ten. Based okay. on the numbers. Based on the numbers, right. that's it. And that could change year to year, yeah. is what they're saying. Which, which is the reason why we were asking for it that way. I'm, gl I'm glad that, who asked that question? I'm glad that you asked that who question because asked clearly, question? Uh, we, were not, clearly we weren't yeah. clear enough. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought that was discussed at the first hearing. Yes. Yeah. Mark, my mm -hmm. no, I no, thought I that you were going to have way. Way. Okay. Okay. some groups okay. three to five. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions from the public <coughs> of this witness? Okay. Seeing none. Lastly, and Thank I, you very much. I don't want to take away from the testimony that was offered, but I think most importantly in the context of the use variance 
is the testimony of a professional planner because there's very specific proofs that we have to meet in order to justify it. So I'd like to introduce Andrew Janu, have him sworn, and remind him to speak slowly. Good evening. <laughs> you say your name? Andrew Janu, J-A-N-I-W. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Andy, you're a licensed professional planner, state of New Jersey. I am. I'm also a member of the American Institute of Certified Planners. I've appeared before this board uh, numerous occasions, currently serving as the planner for the borough of Carteret in the township of Livingston, as well as uh, planning advisor to uh, Freehold Borough, Toms River, uh, South Amboy, Hoboken, Flemington. Okay. So, Andy, having heard all the testimony and the concerns of the neighbors, on the questions from the board, could you characterize this from a planning perspective as to uh, how we qualify for use variance as uh, requested? Certainly. So in preparation for this evening, I've reviewed not only the plans that have been prepared, but I visited the site, I've reviewed your ordinances, and uh, most importantly, Mr. Higgins' review letter and the, uh, and, and the correspondence that's been going back and forth uh, with respect to this application. So this property is located uh, in the townships R4, uh, single family district. It is it was approved uh, for a school use. The district uh, permits as of right single family dwellings and family care homes and conditionally permits houses of worship, uh, government buildings and services in, including public playgrounds quite frankly uh, and community recreation centers. So these, uh, the application this evening is seeking to utilize a portion of that school property efficiently for summer hours uh, as, a, as a day camp for younger children, whereas it's currently used as a uh, summer school program for the older high school age uh, students. Um, because summer camps are not permitted with your, within the zone, and quite frankly, summer camps aren't permitted anywhere in the township. It's not one of your uh, uses that are defined within the ordinance. Uh, we're seeking a use variance for this application this evening. Uh, it'll function largely as a recreation facility, um, but it is a specific summer camp program um, that we are seeking the use for. And we went through at great length the operations. I don't think we need to reiterate it here. But how, what are some of the objectives of the master plan and how does what we're proposing fulfill those? Certainly. So your master plan's goals and objectives are actually uh, fairly uh, responsive to the community's recreation needs. Your master plan reads uh, in its goals and objectives that the township should re-examine existing recreation facilities to determine if they're adequate to serve the existing and future population of the township to ensure that land development in the township provides a balance of land uses which will help maintain the quality of life within the township for its current and future uh, citizens, and to ensure that future development occurs in an orderly manner consistent with uh, developed planning in the community. The master plan goes on to say though, uh, specific to uh, the incorporation of recreation, that due to the increasing cost of acquiring, constructing, operating, and maintaining active recreational facilities, it is important to maximize the use of these facilities in order to gain the most for the least public cost. In Ocean Township, this efficiency has been achieved through a history of cooperation between the municipal government, the Board of Education, various quasi-public recreational groups such as the township, uh, within the township, such as the Little League and Pop Warner Football and the Ocean United Soccer Association past and present cooperation of these entities with regard to the sharing of facilities and maintenance of facilities and the interrelationship of various recreational programs has reduced the need for facilities and ensuring proper maintenance and operation of existing facilities. And, and so, just to jump in, and, and this board has recognized that historically over the years by granting approvals for day camps in existing schools or synagogues, uh, which has been done uh, numerous times over the years. Absolutely, I've re represented several of those facilities within the township that have uh, been successful, successful before the boards. And essentially, it was recognized, as, as I have testified this evening, that the master plan uh, talks about recre recreational opportunities with the township, and in fact, it uh, talks about utilizing existing improvements uh, to its fullest and to the extent that there are certain things like schoolyards that are underutilized in the summer, it's an efficient use of land. Okay, so we're consistent with the master plan, in your opinion. That's correct. Um, and the next step would be we have to show that we're furthering purposes of the municipal land use law. So in your opinion, what purposes are we furthering? Yeah, let, me, let me 
preface that with um, the reason we look at the municipal land use law and the purposes of the municipal land use law is because an application can't be for the sole benefit of the applicant. It has to be a public purpose defined for a variance to be granted. And those public purposes are defined within the municipal yeah. land use law. But before you go to what the public purposes are, there's a big difference between the use having a public benefit directly to the people of Ocean Township as opposed to what the state legislature has recognized to be a public benefit. Correct. Okay, so you're not you're not saying that having the camp here benefits <coughs> the township residents individually. What you're saying is having the camp here furthers these purposes which has been recognized as a public benefit. That's correct. Okay. That's and I correct. think that's an important distinction. Yes. Uh, so within the municipal land use law, um, the purposes that I believe we further are, and they're lettered, so I'll read you the letter and then the reference. Uh, a is to encourage municipal action to guide the appropriate use or development of all lands in the state in a manner which will promote the public health, safety, morals, and general welfare. In this case, the use not only provides a recreational outlet for young individuals during the summer months, but also reinforces Jewish traditions and the religion, and the religion uh, through prayer and education at the facility. So this fosters a sense of community and moral <laughs> guidance that is recognized as a public purpose within the state uh, and is widely recognized as inherently beneficial. And I'll get to that as well. Mr. Uh, Higgins mentions that same uh, tenant within his review letter. Uh, G is to provide sufficient space in appropriate locations for a variety of agricultural, residential, recreational, commercial, and industrial uses in open space, both public and private, according to their respective environmental requirements in order to meet the needs of all New Jersey citizens. In this instance, we have a facility, a school, that uh, has limited utility during the summer months. It has been approved for use as a, as a summer school program for older uh, <coughs> children, um, but it has the necessary infrastructure such as open space, classroom space, indoor recreational space, bus lanes, parking, bathroom facilities that makes it ideal to accommodate a summer camp as well. Uh, I mentioned the master plan's reinforcement of the efficient use of facilities for recreation, and this is ideal because this is uh, something that exists and has the infrastructure necessary to operate a summer camp. And M is to encourage the coordination of the various public and private procedures and activities shaping land development with the view of lessening the cost of such development into the more efficient use of land. And once again, we point to the efficiency of uh, facilities that ha have multiple purposes uh, and infrastructure that can be available to multiple groups, something you recognize in your recreational plan within your master plan, and I believe this is on point with that, uh, that guidance in that we have a facility that can be repurposed during the summer, either as a summer school for uh, older girls or ideally, uh, in this instance, as a, as a summer camp for younger children that can then learn uh, through proper facilities and further their faith. Okay, so there's two ways to meet the positive criteria or the special reasons. One is if it's inherently beneficial, and two, if the site's particularly suited. Correct. Which, in which one do you think we are here? So I certainly believe we're inherently beneficial. Um, however, I think I can argue it from both perspectives, and I'd like to do that for this board to consider that. Uh, so what we're seeking tonight is a D1 variance, uh, which is the highest level of the uh, use variances that that's out there, and the New Jersey legislator legislature, excuse me, recognizes that, uh, as Jennifer said, that uh, a D1 variance can be reconciled either through particular suitability or through inherently beneficial uses. Uh, inher inherently beneficial means a use that is universally considered of value to the community because it fundamentally serves the public good and promotes the general welfare. Such uses include, but are not limited to, hospitals, schools, child care centers, group homes, uh, wind, solar, and photovoltaic energy facilities or structures, and, and religious uh, structures and foundations are also uh, widely accepted as inherently beneficial. In fact, Mr. Higgins in his September 8th uh, review noted a second potential special reason would be that due to the religious aspect of the use, the use would be inherently beneficial. So when we're adjudicating an application uh, as inherently beneficial, we have to consider the unique nature of the use where the education has a religious foundation and that such institutions are also afforded protections under the Religious uh, Land Use and Institutions Person, Persons Act excuse me, uh, of 2000, which is commonly referred to as RELUPA. Uh, but we address the issue of the use and demonstrate how this meets the criteria going through what's known as the SICA criteria. Uh, secret criteria has a foundation uh, of 
balancing inherently beneficial use in a case that was uh, in Wall Township and yeah, dealt with. Let's talk as opposed to being so um, academic about it, okay? Because I, th I think that, you know, it, it, you can say this a lot of times, but let's talk about what, what it is. So SICA is a case. SICA <clears throat> is a case that dealt with a head trauma center in Wall Township uh, where it wasn't permitted, but it was deemed to be so important that the community uh, needed to address a location for that facility. Okay, and, what, and what that did was they established a test that if something's inherently beneficial, in order to meet the criteria, you have to go through a test. So what is that That's test? right. Yes, the, court, the courts determined that because it's deemed inherently beneficial, it meets the positive criteria. Um, and the test is a four-prong test. The first is that you have to identify the public interest at stake. Um, in this case, we have a religious use that furthers a sense of community values and of, commu and of religious values. So that is deemed to be a public interest that's furthered by this type of use. Uh, the second is to identify the detrimental effects that would ensue from the grant of a use variance. Um, I had mentioned that this facility already operates as a school. It has 160 uh, students that are bused throughout the state, and, and Throu so, throughout so, the site. Right. So, <clears throat> so to go back to the neighbor's question, when we say it's a lesser of two evils, we're not conceding that this is an evil, but what we're saying is there already is a realized impact from the school. That's correct. This, the and, and that's important to consider as to what could be done there today versus what we're proposing that can be done there. That's right. Is, again, the, the, uh, a school was granted an approval here for 160 students. Those students are bused there, will operate essentially uh, identically. Um, the variance here really is the age of the children, and you had heard testimony in terms of which age groups would go and how that would be impacted. But we have to understand that there are already children coming to the school and they're bused to this facility. The infrastructure is there, and the infrastructure will be reused. Okay. There'll be additional safety uh, <coughs> issues addressed here because of the age of the children by superior supervision over the high school kids because the younger children need more supervision. There'll be more caregivers on site. So in your opinion, um, would 160 kids outside in a parking lot, would that, could that potentially be more disruptive from a noise perspective than much smaller groups that are supervised with two or three adults? Yeah, the, uh, the testimony was pretty clear that when we're dealing with the younger age group in the summer camp scenario, those groups will be essentially broken down into smaller groups. They'll be rotating through various programs through the day. There'll be fewer children out. There won't be a release of all children at one time to the playground as there is in the high school scenario. So you'll have fewer children with more adult supervision. Um, so I believe in that case, it's, it's a mitigating factor to address with respect to the age differential. The third prong is attempting to uh, see if there's a way to reduce detrimental impacts by imposing reasonable conditions. And in your opinion, is the offer that we provided with regard to um, putting up trees in a fence if determined by the planner to be necessary, that that's one of those types of conditions that would reduce impacts? That's correct. I mean, that's essentially uh, additional buffering to that. That's, that's effective. Um, and I believe that is something that will mitigate the concerns in terms of impact. And, and, an, and an additional mitigation would be the... Uh, the, the type of supervision that we talked about. In the that, that's <clears throat> correct because uh, again because they're younger children there'll be a, a much tighter supervision smaller groups activities outside than there would be with the high school students um, and we do believe that's a, a further mitigation of impact. So then once the board goes through those three prongs the last one is to balance the positive and the negative uh, and make a determination whether or not the substantial that there's a detriment so substantial it outweighs all of these statutorily recognized positives that's correct so in your opinion uh do we pass that test we do um thinking again this operates as a school <coughs> nine months out of the year with 160 students um, so that's kind of our baseline here uh, what we're going to have is younger students here for the summer camp further su uh, supervised more strenuously than the high school students are, smaller groups. Um, they'll be bused as well. The hours will be similar to what the high school is. So when we look at what the potential uh, negative impacts are, it's going to operate, I believe, substantially similar to the current operation of the school on site. If not better. If not better. Uh, we are offering additional buffering to mitigate any uh, type of uh, visual <coughs> 
intrusion or barrier. Um, so I believe when we look at balancing the positive and negative, and again, reinforcing that this is a, 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 an opportunity for recreation for young children as well as religious education for young children, I do believe that the uh, benefits outweigh any of the potential detriments. And again, the baseline there is it already operates as a school. Right, and then the other question is um, recognizing what could go here and, you know, for example, if this synagogue left and the township purchases property, it could yes. be a playground. It could be a playground. Um, so the zoning contemplates putting <coughs> playgrounds and children outside within a neighborhood like this. There, there are pocket parks with playgrounds throughout the community, and those are typically in residential neighborhoods. Okay. So in your opinion, we would meet the test for the use variance under the inherently beneficial standard. Yes. And even if this were not a religious camp, and even assuming that we didn't get the benefits of it being inherently beneficial, is the site particularly suited for the proposed campus? That's right. That would be the uh, the standard under the Medici uh, test. Uh, and the site is particularly suited because of the infrastructure that exists there. We have sufficient parking for vehicles. Uh, I believe the testimony was that we'll be blocking off 40 of the spaces uh, in order to provide protected areas but we still have 81 spaces available from that parking field for the staffing, and that's more than sufficient for the staffing anticipated for either age group of this. Uh, we have classrooms, we have indoor recreation facilities, we have bathroom facilities, uh, we have paved areas that can be used for outdoor recreation. So the, the site is intended to be used this way. The difference really is the age group of the participants on this site. And I think that what's most key is establishing particular suitability we're not making any permanent changes to the site or to the building exactly right we are we using, are using what's it as there. is that's correct so in your opinion as a professional planner could there be anything more particularly suited if we don't have to make any changes it, it, it's an ideal crossover okay um so one of the other things we have to do with regard to um particular suitability is just reconcile with the uh, reconcile why the use isn't permitted and reconcile it with the master plan so that's correct and, and the master plan I spoke to in terms of talking about shared facilities for recreation and, and enhancing recreation facilities throughout the community in this uh, in this instance it's at a private location it's a, it's a private school um, but it certainly does foster the same tenant as your master plan encourages in terms of shared facilities uh, with respect to why this use is not permitted here, uh, I testified that it's not permitted anywhere. It's not a use that's contemplated within your zone. Could one of the reasons be that there really isn't vacant land in Ocean Township to create a new camp anywhere? So by having it, by not having it permitted, it requires this strict scrutiny by the board each time a camp wants to occupy an existing facility. So it's not a prohibition it's that the governing body may have just chosen that this is the better procedure and, and it does so and i liken that jennifer to the way the board treats uh government uses within this district it basically says they're permitted but we should go to the planning board to make sure that the the site's accommodating the use and that's exactly right i testified before this board on other similar camp uh, facilities and, and the test and the questioning is always focused around the existing facilities and the appropriateness of those facilities to accommodate the use. In this case, quite frankly, this is probably one of the most on point <coughs> applications that I've been before with the, in this township. Um, the facilities are all there. It's, it's, it's an ideal uh, situation in terms of the ability to accommodate the parking, the bus traffic, the children. Um, it, it's going to operate very similarly to the way it does year round. Okay. So in your opinion, if the variances were granted, would that have a negative impact on the surrounding area? No. Again, I, as I testified, even though the students are going to be younger, the supervision will be at a higher level, and I think that mitigates uh, any of those concerns. And it's your opinion that the site is both particularly suited for the use and the use is inherently beneficial? It is. So what's your conclusion? Uh, my conclusion is that the use variance can be granted without detriment to, to the public, without detriment to the community. That will uh, enhance uh, the education uh, of young children and particularly enhance their Jewish uh, traditions and, and uh, religious education at this facility. It's an ideal facility for that. It's, it's purposed for that reason.
Okay, most importantly, the granting of, the courts have found that the granting of any variance creates some level of detriment because you're <clears throat> diverging from the ordinance. But is, but is it that there is a detriment or does the detriment have to be so substantial that it outweighs all of the other positive it, benefits? In balancing the negative criteria against any positive criteria, the, the test is substantial detriment. That's correct. Thank you. Any questions? I do. That's why I board. looked at you, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, there are several summer camps in our public school district in, I think, two of the buildings right now. Has this camp ever approached the public school district and asked for, you know, to have their camp in their school since we wouldn't need a permit or, or special permit? I don't think the planner can answer this. Question. No, but I, no. What I can, what I can say okay. to a couple of things. There isn't a synagogue or a prayer area with a Torah and the other accoutrements that are necessary for the Jewish prayer that goes on here. That's here in this synagogue. So this type of camp couldn't be done in the school because it doesn't have the same necessary infrastructure for a religious camp like this. Yeah. This is a faith-based camp and the okay. that, that environment is Because there specific. is a faith-based camp that runs in the middle school for years. It's called Camp David. It, it is may. that different? It, it is different because they don't, that's a, that's a, as I understand it, more of a sport-based camp. There's they don't have piece, the though. level of prayer and um, services that, that goes on here. So, yes, it is different. Okay. And what was my other question? Um, <clears throat> there was a second piece to the question. I forget what it was. I'm oh, how's I'm the camp? all night. <laughs> Has the camp reached out to the public school district and asked them to be part of that or no? You're saying no because of... I'm not sure that I... No, so, so again, because the, of the, the... high school... Any of the schools would not be particularly suited for our needs because without going into great detail, you need a Torah, you need an ark, you need certain things that are vestments as part of Jewish prayer that aren't in the school. Yeah. Essentially, while there is a recreational facility to the camp, that's not the sole purpose for the camp. This is also an educational camp and specific to the education in the Jewish religion. So the, the classroom context is important and the facilities within a Jewish classroom are important to the furthering the education. Here and, the and the other thing, any food that's served there or eaten there is all going to be kosher. Mm -hmm. So there's just there's there's built in suitability yeah, with this kitchen. synagogue than there would be at a school. And I always forget what secular and non-secular is, but I would say a non-religious school. Yeah, and I think too it's important for the board to understand that the courts over the years for this type of use, whether it's inherently beneficial or whether you're looking at whether or not the site is particularly suited for the use, the courts have ruled that it's irrelevant whether the applicant has looked to go to other sites to, to do it. Mm -hmm. okay. But my, my only question was yeah. because yeah. they said that, um, you know, that, that there were no other sites that permitted. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that there's... No, no, no. Well, your zo no, your no, no, no. You misunderstood. Yeah. Your zoning ordinance does not list summer camps as a permitted use anywhere Any, in the no, township. I think, but you know, Jennifer, you also said there are no other vacant sites in the town that could be no, developed. No, to build a camp. To build a camp. Yeah, yeah, to build a camp. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, yeah. no, I, I wasn't talking about there were no other sites that could that similarly offer. accommodate yeah. a camp, mm -hmm. yeah. but not a camp like this. And what I was saying that part okay. of the reason why, and you're the township planner, why camps aren't there, I imagine, and I can ask you, is this way, by not having it as a permitted use, each camp has to be very strictly scrutinized as to the type of operation. That's That's correct. Okay. I was just trying to understand yeah. Yeah. why it's allowed yeah. in yeah. the public schools. Oh, it's, it's not. It's, you'd need a use variance to do it. And Camp David got a use variance, Camp, and the camp got a use variance at Hillel. I don't know if you remember um, Camp Allsport got a use <coughs> variance to have it at the sports center right. back on okay. Brielle. The only That's one that did not get a use variance, and most of you here might remember if you've lived here long enough, is uh, Oakhurst Country Day. Because that has been around that's since. Been around. Yeah, that predated. Since. I don't think the camp that was at the intermediate school ever got a variance. I don't recall that ever getting a variance. Okay, I'd, yeah. I'm surprised. But, but, because, but because it was a public school, and I think a decision was made that they can oh, because go it's pub you know, okay, against so, the public school, yeah. So the public, and just by way of very quick background, 
the public entities, the Township of Ocean and the school board do not need to come for anybody's permission to do anything. Mm -hmm. They basically go to the planning board yeah. for a consent okay. to say, here's what we're doing. Yeah. So because it was a <coughs> municipal and or a board of it, like when you guys did your parking lot here, mm -hmm. you didn't have to go get a site plan approval. Right, okay. I was just trying to understand yeah. why we needed this one, but we didn't for the school. Okay, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Yeah, when they bought the property from Gentlemen, any questions over there? No questions with the windows? Any questions from the public? Yeah, I actually I do have one question. Okay. And I know the answer to this question, and it's so I'm not trying to open up a can of worms, but I do think it's important for the record. Here we go. Is, okay, here we go, yeah. Here we go. Is was consideration ever given to moving the play area instead of on the western portion of the parking lot? to the eastern portion of the parking lot, behind this, further behind the, uh, the school. Yeah, the, the proximity to the road and the safety of the campers. Mm -hmm. After supervised, I don't think that's an issue. Oh. But my answer to that would be the fact that there are three houses that are directly adjacent to that parking lot, and it might have more of an impact on them Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I thought yeah. you. Uh, uh, I, that isn't what I thought uh, you meant. I uh, thought you meant the oh, lawn no, area. Oh no! 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 Oh no! No! Oh no! 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 I meant the uh, the other parking area. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that, that yeah. would have a greater yeah. impact on yeah. the yeah. residents along Lawrence Avenue. I mean, where right. where you're proposing it is the farthest from existing residences in both directions. Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. I misunderstood okay. your question. Okay. Yeah, and, and I also think that those. That the lots that we're up against, I think, might even have some environmental constraints on them when you look there, at the. Uh, yeah, I think on one of them there might be the other one. I don't think there is. Of course, without going out and testing it, you don't know. Right, right. <clears throat> Questions from the public? Oh, all right. Is this good then? That should be good. Uh, John Waldron, 1207 Herbert Avenue. The, the, the question is really that that location that is, the location now that is projected to be the playground is, I mean, directly across the street from us. So it, it, Actually, it's not. You've got parking between that location and Logan and not Logan, and uh, Roselle. So, so that's a distance away as opposed to being right literally in the backyards of the other houses that front on Lawrence <coughs> Avenue. Right. It's, so, yeah, it's, so, it's, so it's, it's a compromise. It's a compromise location. It's, it's, as, it's far away from the houses on Lawrence as it is from your house. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> any other questions from the public <clears throat> okay any more witnesses so we are over an hour um, but we can keep going I think what you have point. I believe what we have left uh, Mr. Fuller mm -hmm. is probably the two neighbors would yeah I would not want to make them come back another time <coughs> I'm not sure if Ms. Yeah. Was going for a vote but I think that while mm -hmm. everybody's here and yeah no that's here, I would I would I would agree a little longer to yep. let them yeah. uh, yeah. address the board in any manner they seem to be up. okay so we'll have uh, comments from the public come on up sir I'll ask you to state your name and address again Pete, you can sit this time oh yeah sir. yeah certainly yeah sit down Maybe you yeah <laughs> Look at he's just coming close because he's got these fancy eye eye <laughs> Um Sorry, as I you have said, to ask. Oh, I'm sorry, you have to Miller, say. Yeah. 1203 Herbert okay. Avenue. Yes, and sir, I, now that you're testifying, the chair is going to swear you. Oh, I have to swear you. So do you swear, swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Uh, as per the approval of conditional use, which was September 8th, 2011, um, there is numerous items that they don't follow. 
at that school. Uh, would you like me to read what? Which, which what items they do they not follow? Because the board all has copies of that. Okay. <clears throat> um, it's the one that. Well, I have a. There's a bunch of. Them. Uh, up to two coaches, coach buses, and smaller school bus van type of vehicles shall be permitted to bring students to the site and remain in the parking lot during the day, but the buses shall not, shall not be permitted to idle their engines at any time and must be parked in the designated spots as per final plan submitted by applicant. Number one, they idle every day at least 15 minutes every couple hours. State laws as to that, isn't it? Well, and it's been called to the police. Uh, I believe uh, Mr. Kirk's people have been notified of it. We were notified mm -hmm. about the amount, not the idling, but the amount. Well, of I'm getting to that too. Okay. But. Uh, Numerous times since 2011. I would say at least a dozen times. Uh, that's one item. Uh, let's see. Summer school is permitted as long as the hours comply with the hours of operation for the school year and the number of students, staff, parking, and intensity of the use of the premises do not exceed <laughs> that of a regular school. Okay, this is specifically for the girls' high school, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I'm, uh, if you're asking me a question, we're not here for the school tonight, so I can't answer questions. I know, but I'm just saying this is one of the things that they're, you know, that's on there. It says summer school. It doesn't say anything about summer camp. Well, Correct, which asking, is why we're here we're asking, asking for, for permission use for the okay. camp. All right. Agreed. So. Believe me, I would have loved if we could have argued that we didn't need to come here and that it was allowed <laughs> under the resolution. Um, up to two coaches, bus, buses, and additional small vans in the school drive on Logan Road from Deal Road to Sunset, Alaire Avenue, are not permitted to drive. They constantly drive down Herbert Avenue. Constantly. And that's been reported to the police and to the offices of Mr. Kirk's people. Uh, there is an issue here about overnight parking. They park overnight. The Friday night, no, the car, people's cars. I think that's with regard to the synagogue use you might be yes. speaking of. But it's still in something that, that this Ilian school, which is you know, not taking care of the issues that they're supposed to. But it, okay. um, they do park overnight. They can park there Friday day, and then they come back for Saturday for the services or whatever and get their cars. At least they have a dozen cars. Okay. That's all I have for that. Uh, one important issue that I have to bring up is the um, the uh, road situation. Now, they're talking about the amount of buses. You know, we have a big development going on at Deal Road and Logan Road. There's going to be a lot of... Address the board. Thank so. you. <coughs> I'd love to make the decision. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of traffic coming out of that big development on... 35 and Logan Road mm -hmm. and uh, Deal Road. That's definitely going to impact the traffic on Logan Road, without a doubt. And uh, there was one other issue that I remember seeing in here, and I don't remember highlighting it, is there was supposed to be no off-site parking. When they have, and I'm going back to the Ilian School again, and this could happen with the uh, summer camp, if they have some type of a graduation or something, there's not going to be enough parking for all those kids' families. Mr. Miller, just, I don't know if you heard the testimony, we're not having any special events. There'll be no graduations, no gatherings, other than orientation, and that will be staggered, so it will never be the full... Well, uh, you know, I have to argue with you, because I've heard that before, and, and just... From, not by me. 
No, not by you, but right. I've heard that before in this thing. Okay. And they, they've clogged up the whole neighborhood with cars. Then you should welcome the camp as opposed to the school. Mm. Well, we'll see. No, I'm not being cute. I'm no, saying know, if you I have know. these issues with the school and they're continuing to talk. But the whole problem is you call and, and nobody does anything. Okay, but didn't I give you my card and my number? Mm -hmm. Now you know to call. And as far as the uh, buffers and that kind of stuff, that's great, but I, I don't know that how, excuse me, <laughs> I don't know how well that's going to work because kids, kids are kids. And I understand, I had a tattoo of them myself. And just one other thing, I am of the Jewish faith myself, and I'm not coming after this situation because of any other reason than I'm concerned about my neighborhood. And that's the only reason, not against anything religion-wise. But thank you for your time. Um, are you in favor of putting up the fence and extra shrubs? <laughs> I don't know, because I don't know that it's going to do any good. They, Even if it doesn't do any good, it's certainly not going to do any harm, right? Right. And you would, it would buffer It's just the thing is that somebody's got to take care of it. And that's the big issue now. That it Now it's all dead, and <laughs> it's dead. Well, I, I, was, I would assume it's part of the... Uh, <laughs> Approval, <coughs> the uh, landscaping would have to be approved in order for them to get a seal yeah, for this and, to some extent. And if there is no sprinkler system serving that area, a sprinkler system would have to be put in. And there is, there's, there's, uh, and used. There's uh, <laughs> water, what do they call it, uh, where they, water just drips out of the hose. Okay. That's there, but it's not a sprinkler system. Okay. Yeah. The landscaping will probably be substantially improved uh -huh. as a result of the, if mm -hmm. the board approves this. Because it's going to be sent over to <coughs> Mr. Higgins and he's going to demand certain things. Yeah, I, I know Mr. Higgins does a heck of a job. Excellent job. That's all. Thank you for your time. Well, I have to ask if anybody has any questions of you. <coughs> Anyone? You too. Is there any type of sound wall? Like, I don't know. Yeah. That could be put in that area. Because I it don't just seems like their biggest so. concern I, I, I is the noise. A board on board fence would do as much as a sound wall <coughs> in that location. Okay. Yeah, it's just it's just to open an area. To do to have a sound wall be affected it would probably have to be like 12, 15 feet high. And ugly. And ugly. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and yeah. ugly, yes. Yeah. Just I, think, uh, I think landscaping uh, trees and bushes dampen the sound. You know, just as well. Um, I, maybe not just as well as a sound wall, but I think when you compare the effectiveness of yeah. uh, landscaping versus a sound wall, you're and and, and also compare the Stones. visual impact. Okay. You'd rather have one. <coughs> just trying to think both sides. <laughs> Any more comments from the public? I don't object. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, name and John address Waldron, again. 1207 Herbert Avenue. Thank you. I swear to tell the truth, sleep. the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Okay. I had prepared something a, a while ago <laughs> when I first heard that this was going to happen. So I'd just like to read that. Uh, for many years, Temple Beth Torah was a part of our neighborhood. We would attend temple events car washes that they had, rummage sales. On holidays, we would allow our friends to park in our driveway to attend temple services. When Elan School was approved, the first thing they did was put up no trespassing signs. So much for a good neighbor. Um, All that was agreed to during the meetings, and Dave <coughs> had mentioned this, the meetings of 2011 uh, virtually was ignored. Students were wandering the neighborhood. That has changed. Litter was everywhere. Buses idled for hours, not to mention the screaming of students on campus. That behavior alone indicates a total lack of respect for, for neighbors. Uh, so why now should we believe anything? <coughs> this is my big point is that we it, they've broken a lot of 
promises in those in the original uh, agreement, and I don't understand why that should continue. Uh, from the beginning, it seemed an absurd proposal to bus students daily from Brooklyn into a quiet, well-established neighborhood. It now seems equally absurd to create a campground on, on an asphalt parking lot and introduce constant racket that it will generate. Right now, on any day during the school year, we are exposed to up to four tour buses jockeying in the parking lot, beepers blaring, kids screaming. It's you know, and they have to remember, this is 11 years. I've been there for 35 or, or more, maybe, you know. Um, when the weather allows, the kids are outside, more screaming, and at times loudspeakers loud blasting music. Um, with the summer months comes a sigh of relief. School is over, quiet returns. And now you want to take that away from us as well. Uh, you know, how miserable do you want us to be? I, I, I just, it's uh, just a difficult situation for the neighbors that have to endure all the noise. And I, I honestly don't think that there's any way that a, um, uh, a fence or a tree is going to buffer that. Um, one thing you don't have here is like a, <coughs> A noise expert, uh, you know, who could maybe uh, uh, analyze that kind of situation. But <coughs> take it from me, from the experience that we we've had <coughs> over the years, it's very noisy. Whether it's twenty screeching kids, twenty screeching kids all day, you know, different groups, it's very very. Um, disconcerting to have all the time, you know. Um, so I just leave you with that, uh, and and, uh, and that's it. Thank you. Any questions? I do. So are you saying before <coughs> the proposal for this summer camp that during the summer there is nothing there? Like you're saying right. that there's... Well, I, I, there's, there's, very, no there's never really any, any activity. activity during the summer yes. at this site. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so the residents have the summer exactly. quiet. Yes, yes. And, you know, and that's, that's the big changing. difference between this. All right, the school was passed. I can't do anything about that. And I understand that. But now you want to go and put a, a, a camp in here and basically take our summers away. The summer, it's... It's summertime, Jersey Shore, you know, uh, that's the okay. big issue. I, I have a question just to follow up. Of course. You heard the testimony that there is a summer school. Yes, I did, and I don't understand <coughs> that because it has a very low impact. And, but, and you also recognize that the approval would allow a summer school at the same intensity. Yes, I do. That the school is. So if the camp is not approved, and you heard all the testimony as to how the camp will be better, the school <coughs> could expand their summer school program and operate the school year-round at the same intensity. Uh, no, I understand that, but what I would <coughs> say is that, in response to that, is that the summer school, I mean, you're not going to have the same volume of, of, of kids in, in summer schools. How, how, you know, not everybody, every uh, high school girl is going to go to summer school. I, I yeah. understand what you're saying, but yeah. the approval allows for that. No, I understand it, it allows for it, but uh, I'm talking in practical terms <coughs> as, as to what we can, I mean, what is now, you know, what we, what we, um, ha the way it is now, that's all I can I do. Understand. Yeah. Okay. That's it, right? <coughs> More questions? <coughs> Any questions from the public? Thank you. Can I have two minutes? Um, I think before two minutes, Jim, you, you went through your report last month, I think, right? Yes. yes. Is there anything following today that has you changing anything that you No, not said? really. The, the one thing I do want to uh, advise the board of, and I don't think Mr. Janu's covered that in his report, when if you decide this is inherently beneficial, has an inherently beneficial component because of the religious aspect of it, that 
the balancing test for an inherently beneficial use is different than the balancing tests that you're used to. Normally you have to do a balancing test and if the benefits substantially outweigh the detriments, then you can approve the application. With an inherently beneficial use, the, the SICA test that Mr. Jano was talking about, the, the courts have said that the detriments have to substantially outweigh the benefits. So you can have detriments, and if they don't substantially outweigh the benefits, <clears throat> it's something that should still be approved if you consider it to be inherently beneficial. I, I, I just wanted I, to make that I, clear. That's what I stressed at the okay, end. I, Andy, okay, may, maybe clear. I missed that too. And, and again, Jim, just a question for you. <clears throat> The, the detriments, it's more of a detriment on a larger scale, not if there's, and I'm not discounting well, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Miller, yeah. And I'm not discounting <coughs> Mr. Waldron and their concerns, but when the board looks at detriments, it's at a detriment of the use overall as opposed to, to one particular person or two particular people. Well, it's a detriment on the surrounding area. Right. Yeah. So Which if is it's, more than one or two people. Yeah, that's right. Like, for example, and I'm not going to mention the community, but my office had a hearing earlier this week where the board, there was one objector to an application, and the board asked the objector if they would agree to a change to the application, and the objector said no. So the board basically abdicated their responsibility and voted the application down because there was one person objecting to it with, without really a, a sound basis. Now, I'm not saying there's not a sound basis for the neighbors here uh, up that are objecting. I'm, I'm sure that they're disrupted, and I'm sure that there's going to be noise during the summer, but I think what the board has to look at is whether or not that detriment substantially outweighs the benefits of this application. Yes. Yeah, why don't we all take <coughs> two minutes? <coughs> okay, we are back. <laughs> Amy, could you uh, take the roll? Here. <coughs> Here. 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 Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, we are not comfortable proceeding with the vote tonight. Uh, what I would ask is that since all of the testimony is done and the public had an opportunity to give its comment, I'd ask you to close the public portion and adjourn this to the next meeting. And uh, at that meeting, uh, depending on if we have the full seven members, I'd like to give my closing arguments at that time because I think that they can be more effective uh, in person as opposed to reading the transcript or watching it on TV. So. Okay. That, that, that's that's not, perfectly fine. You're well, fine with closing the public hearing, um, <coughs> but the uh, members who are not here tonight, not Eric and, and not Jack, but the other members need to be supplied with the transcript or the, or the tape. So they can become eligible on, you know, the, the, our chair, chairwoman is right. not here, and right. Rich, Rich, Rich Van Wagner, anybody else we're missing? No, I think that's it. What? Mr. DeLomo. Oh, Mr. DeLomo. Mr. DeLomo, well, he didn't hear anything about the yeah. um, So if we could get those okay. members to read, then there would be more eligible voters. Because Thanks. the reason being for the public, uh, this decision requires five affirmative votes. It's not a majority. Uh, a D-variance, which this is, required by statutory requirements, requires five affirmative votes. So if the board were to vote tonight and it was four to one, which on a general variance would be successful, it is not successful on the D-variance. You need five affirmatives. And the applicant has every right to get that type of vote from the full seven members. And, and I just have a question. <coughs> in the event that we don't have it in December, and we have to go into January. Or is everybody here coming back for January? Or are there going to be new board members in January? We don't I, change that. 
Oh, you change in July. July. I forgot. We're July. So Unless you know something we yeah. don't. I won't be here in January. <laughs> if that matters. But no, no, no. Wrong, 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 wrong. I can have a job next year. <laughs> I'm gonna be on vacation. I can try all of them. No, 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 you know. I need no. the paycheck. Okay. Does any member wish to uh, make a motion to close the public hearing? A motion. Second. Yes. 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 Okay, so we carry to next. Without notice. Or publication. Or publication. It would be so carried. Okay. Thank you. But don't don't move. Yeah, right. Let's get Manel and Mamie back in. Yeah, we can get the rest of the board back in. On the next case, uh, David S is, is ill, and Miss Krupko. Guess who got a phone call from your board attorney and Amy this morning? This morning, this after, four o'clock. This afternoon to say we need you to be the attorney for the next applicant because it's no, an LLC. I just want to say thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you, God bless you all. Thank you so much. So we, we thank Jennifer for pitching in so that we can move the agenda. Ms. Krimko, guess who didn't get a phone call about sitting here tonight? <laughs> oh, you didn't know you were going to be the chair? Madam Chair called me today. It was very nice. <laughs> because she had a feeling nobody else was calling Listen, me. now that the one that I can... <clears throat> she was very so good. Surprised. Okay, case number two, 199 Highwood Road, LLC, block 25.16, lot two, 199 Highwood Road. Ms. Krimko. For the record, Jennifer Krimko, on behalf of the applicant, and just so the board knows, I understand that the applicant, you can have a seat, hang out. The applicant uh, submitted a set of plans, met with your board's professionals, addressed all of their concerns, as I understand it. It's simply a uh, building over an existing home uh, that is already non conforming and a small addition to the rear. Uh, so the variances really are driven by the fact that the existing home sits askew on the property and is currently non-conforming. And I'll defer to Ben and Jim to uh, provide their reports. Okay, I think I say Amy, mark the packet, please. That's what we have in front of us, right? What? What this? No, okay. Jim, you want to tell us what you think? Yeah, okay, what I'll do is I'll summarize. Please what do. What they're proposing to do is expand an existing one-story residence. They're going to expand the first floor. They construct a second-story addition uh, with a slight expansion of the rear setback uh, of the building. And they're, they're going to remove two non-conforming sheds from the site that are significantly non-conforming in terms of their setbacks. Um, <coughs> The site is somewhat irregular in shape. It's an area, it's a little bit larger than the minimum required by the ordinance. It's at 10,525 square feet, 10,000 square feet is required. Um, but the depth of the lot is only 75.9 feet where 100 feet is required. Uh, the minimum front setback, it's on a corner lot. From Highwood Road, the uh, minimum set, the setback is 25.6 uh, feet. And 30 feet is required. That's not changing, although they are extending the building slightly in the northern direction, and that that'll be a garage that they're put they're putting on, and that garage will still not meet the required front setback, but it will be greater than the existing 25.6 feet. Uh, the front setback along Wells Avenue will remain the same at 21.3. The rear setback is currently 17.7 feet. They are expanding the building a little bit, and they will have a 10 feet, 6 inch, or a 10.5 uh, foot setback for the two-story addition that's going to be put on uh, in there. And that's, that's at its narrowest point. It's actually at a slight angle to the rear property line, so it, it tapers back in and setback increases. <coughs> And then my report says a minimum side setback for accessory structure, and that shouldn't be there. I, I, for some reason, I tried to. I thought I eliminated that. They've eliminated all the accessory structures and the setback variances. <clears throat> so those are the three variances. Uh, ben and I did meet with them, and one concern I had is the original plan had a lot coverage variance that I couldn't 
see a reason for that because of the fact that the lot is actually oversized and why why would you have a lot coverage variance on an oversized lot so they cut it back and they, they now conform to the building coverage um, the other thing is that the uh, ordinance requires that off-street parking within the front yards a driveway can only be 20 feet wide and they originally conformed to that but their driveway came right through a very large uh, very well very nice tree that was right in front of the garage so we talked about them doing a loop driveway that would save that tree and that creates a variance for the width of the driveway as measured perpendicular to the street i think it's a technical variance but it actually gives them more off street parking than they would have otherwise had and the only concern i have there is that the driveway as they propose it may remove cause the removal of several other mature trees so i suggested that the applicant locate those trees on a plan and have a meeting with Ben and let and work with Ben to decide exactly where the driveway can go so that it doesn't destroy any additional trees. So Jenna, if we were to approve this tonight, it would still be contingent upon a meeting with you and final. Yeah, yeah meeting with Ben. Oh, I think ben, Ben's sorry, better, ben. yeah. better to handle that. Ben, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, the... Uh, couple of things in my review letter uh, have been addressed. Uh, I had the, the same note about the accessory structures, uh, which, which goes away. Um, the, I had indicated the same thing about the trees, uh, and I think that I, I have no problem meeting the applicant on site uh, should, should the board uh, approve to basically lay out where the driveway should go so that the uh, existing trees are not impacted. Um, just I'd like a little testimony on uh, whether there are going to be any grading modifications just to ensure that there's no uh, impact to neighboring properties um, and then uh, just a few details of uh, the driveway apron depressed curb uh, concrete walkway uh, because there are some improvements that are going into the right-of-way we want to make sure those details meet the township standards Yeah, just one other minor thing I noticed in my report is that there is an existing fence that goes from this property onto adjacent properties, and that needs to be discussed as to okay. you know, why it's there, whether it should be removed. Okay. Well, Any questions for Jim or for Ben? No. What's that? I was asking if anybody had any questions about oh, okay. what you, oh, okay. you just okay. said. I can stipulate to a few things that I think would make this much very easy and quick. There are no proposed grading changes that would have any impact on any of the surrounding neighbors. And we can relocate the fence so it's entirely on our property. And we'd be happy to add whatever details been requested on the plans. I think that addressed everything in the reports. It's it's your fence? Do we know that? That's good. We get a good score. No, sure. Yeah. Well, this isn't the owner. This is the contractor. So, to the if it, if it is our fence, we will relocate it. If it's not our fence, we will prepare put the fence line on our property. Yeah, most of the fence is on their property, okay, so, so it's I'm probably there. Pretty okay. sure it's their fence. Okay. Okay. I have the contractor here to answer any questions. I, but I think I, Ben had some questions. Do you think I just stipulated no, no. to all of them? But that's stipulations enough. <clears throat> you yeah. were asking about the mm -hmm. depressed curb and the. No, I said. Yeah, she it. said the details will be provided on the plan. Oh, okay. So if you'd like to hear from the contractor, he's, he's if we could, good. yep. Sure. Doesn't have to be long, I don't think, to see if we have questions for you. Okay. Well, let's get you sworn in. What's your name? Gila Telani. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Do you want spelling on that? Yeah. They're old friends. They've talked quite a. He's the one who got Amy to call me. No, I, I called you. I know. So. <coughs> I was my. And may I call you Gilly? Yeah, sure. Okay, because that's he goes by Gilly, and that's how Amy knows him. Yes. Um, Gilly, you're the contractor who would build this home, build these additions, if they, uh, if it was approved. Yes. And you heard that I had said that there's no proposed grading changes, is that true? Yes, we gave the grading plan to Ben a while ago and there's not gonna be any changes. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's to the extent that the fence is ours, will we locate it onto the property list? The fence is very old, could be there from I don't know how many years, so when they put the fence in, they probably didn't have exactly the line, but we, we're going to move it, make it... Uh, put it on the property yes. line. And then lastly, you'd heard that we stipulated to, one, meeting on site to make sure we save as many trees as we can with the driveway, that's fine. Yes. And two, um, putting all the details on the plan that Ben asked for. There's no, there is no curb on those streets. It's like you just go from asphalt to asphalt to the driveway. Okay. So if we have to do something, we'll do whatever we need to do. Yeah, but, uh, okay, that's fine. If, yeah. if there's no existing curb no on existing the road, it, it wouldn't be uh, necessary. Okay. Any other questions? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions for the public? Okay. That's all I have. That's all you have. Would you like to make a summary a argument or anything for, like yeah, that? Yeah, the, the summary is your professionals uh, support this application. Uh, we're taking an existing house, we're making it nicer, we're improving some non conformities, and uh, we're doing our best to minimize any impact uh, by agreeing to everything Ben and Jim asked for. Very good. We're doing a new roof and new siding? Yes. On the whole building? The whole building, yes. Wait for Mark to ask if they're going to match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's all new. Right, 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 right. Okay. Anybody like to offer a positive resolution? I think we got to close the public hearing. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh, I can't believe it. I thought I was doing so well. Um, Motion to close the public. Yeah, well, did anybody from the public have anything to say at all? No. Um, we have a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Second. Second. Amy, call the vote. Yes. 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 Now, would anyone like to offer a positive resolution? I'll offer a positive resolution. I'll second. Who seconded that? Amy, can you call her roll? Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Dan, thank you for coming in. Dan. You're welcome. We, this, we can, uh, move it off the agenda. No, it would have been silly to come back. Okay, case number three, Henri Goldson, Block 25, Lot 133, 254 Highwood Road. You want me to sit in? <laughs> 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 She comes cheap tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Hi, good night. My name is Amory Golson. Okay. I'm not sure if the process up. No, that's fine. Your address? Huh? Your address? 254 Highwood Road. Okay. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right, very good. Have a seat. <laughs> um... What would make sense here? Do you want to tell us what you're doing and then we'll talk to our professionals? Okay, so what I'm proposing and doing is doing an addition to the existing building, um, a second story and complete portion of the attic space. Uh, I think to the one rare, the setback is, it's a, the original setback is not in confirmation, mm -hmm. so I'm asking for to make the addition for hardship okay. since that's how I can yeah. help. Okay, <clears throat> okay, Jim. Basically, uh, there are a number of variances, and they're really all tied to the fact that this is a grossly undersized lot. It's a 50 foot lot where 90 foot wide is required, it's a 6,000 plus square foot lot where 10,000 square feet is required. And basically, uh, I think she's working within the constraints of the existing site and doing things I, I think that, that makes sense. Uh, there's a minimum front setback requirement. Uh, existing is 25 feet, four inches. And basically, she's just covering the front porch and maintaining that same setback with the covering. Uh, you have a side yard setback requirements, one side and both sides. Uh, one side 10 feet is required, it's 5.9 feet. Uh, the other <coughs> side, for both sides, 25 feet is required, 
and the combined setback is 21.7 feet. And basically she's just going up and getting a second floor. So I don't see a problem there. Um, and then there's a building coverage. Again, 27% of buildable lot area is, is permitted. And this is such a small lot to do 27% doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, they're at 30.4%, which isn't much more. And I think it's consistent with, with this type of lot. The other zones that are the smaller lots permit much more building coverage. So that's, I don't think that's a problem. And then there's also a, va a variance for number of stories above grade. Uh, the ordinance permits two and they're proposing three for a third level playroom within the building and again the intent there is to control the uh, the bulk of the building and this building does not exceed the height requirement in feet of the ordinance somebody looking at the building isn't going to be able to tell there's a third level in there and because the fact that it's such a small site and such a small footprint for the building I think it makes sense to allow her to go up that other story as long as she's not putting the building you know, above the maximum height and feet that's required by your ordinance. Uh, I did have a question, the fact that there are two sheds on the site and the setbacks of those st sheds are non-conforming because there's two of them. And I, you know, if they're both existing, I think we just need her to describe what they are, how long they've been, she's, they've been there, if she knows. And if they have to be replaced or if they get destroyed, then they have to be relocated in a conforming location. Be, uh, just before, so lot coverage is going to be 30.4%. What is That's it That's correct. I believe it's pretty close to 30.4% now. Uh, we're not expanding yeah. the footprint, so it should yeah. be about the if same. She, yeah, I think she's just going up straight. And I don't have the plan here in front of me. I don't have Ben does. Impervious yeah. coverage? No, building coverage. Oh, building coverage. It's going from 14.5% oh, to 20%. Oh, that's, well, yeah, that's, plan. yeah that's, that's wrong. Okay. That's wrong. So, yeah. It says 27 is 130.4. I just want to know what's existing. Yeah, yeah. And I know. Oh, this is the wrong plan. No, it is. It's right here. That's Kramer Res. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that I think the chart was wrong when I looked at it and okay. calculated it. But it, it, yeah. the existing yeah. is approximately the same. Yeah, it's approximately okay, the same. Close yeah. enough for a resolution yeah. for me. Okay. So. Ben, so. I don't know if Ben has any questions. Uh, I don't have any substantial engineering concern with okay. the application. Okay. So, Ms. Goldson, um, did you hear Mr. Higgins talking about the sheds? Yeah. Um, they've been there for a long time. The. The one of the shed was there since 2013, and the newer shed had put up, I think, probably about four years ago. Okay. Um, I think what, what we would suggest is to tie any approval to a condition that would say if something were to happen to one of those sheds, um, you'd have to make sure you put it in the proper space because right now they're too close to the, to the property line. Is that okay with you? Okay. What, what do you use the sheds for? Uh, storage. One of them has like uh, a lawnmower, the kids' bikes. Uh, the second one has like Christmas stuff. But with, um, with the addition, will you still need two storage sheds? Probably just one. So? I would like if I could keep the newer one. But okay. And if this yeah. comes down, yeah, that's then, yeah. then it, it, it sort of brings the... the Lot yeah, we'll bring the lot coverage. So, how do I just, so you're gonna Which one is the newer one? The yeah, bigger one? The bigger one. The bigger one. Okay. One. So, so how, how do I, one I, how do get I get rid of. define the older one on in a resolution? Do you have a do you have a garage? This is the bigger one. Pardon me? Do you have a garage? No. Okay. Yeah. 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 Not telling her to take down the shed. Yeah. Uh, if somebody else wants to, they can try. <laughs> but okay. it's up to the board. We certainly can put it. Any of them are destroyed or, or taken down that they have to be replaced in uh, conforming locations. If mm -hmm. you're comfortable with the two sheds, fine. Is there now? Is there, okay. So, is Any other questions? Okay? It's not okay. Yeah. No. I, mean, I don't have a problem with the two sheds. Okay, you got them both. <laughs> <laughs> okay.
Any members of the public want to speak on this? <laughs> Anyone close the public hearing? I'll motion. Amy, take a roll. Yes. 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 Anyone make a positive? Motion for positive resolution. I'll second. Amy. Yes. 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 Good luck. Talk to Amy, right, this week? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Good night. Motion to adjourn, anybody? Anyway? All in favor? <coughs> Thank you. Good night, everybody. Motion to this week, because oftentimes it's like, see Amy tomorrow, and there's not much to <laughs> help with Amy tomorrow. <laughs> so, but take it easy on it. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. 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 This week is tomorrow. Yeah, 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 well, that's fair. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Oh, uh, yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah.